Hola, the techno bear here. This video is about looping and multi-tracking on the Octatrack. I bought the Octatrack as a partner to my modular system, but this is going to be applicable to any kind of looping and layering. The Octatrack is a beast, really flexible, but with that flexibility comes a bit of complexity and you need to have a few tips and tricks to kind of get the most out of it. And this is, in this video, I'm going to show you some of those connected with multi-tracking and looping and layering. So this setup, I have a, a few important goals. The first is it's simple to use. The second is that I can record multiple tracks with varying lengths, that I can layer a single track and overdub onto it, and that I can do some real-time monitoring of effects on the Octatrack. The obvious way to do looping with the Octatrack is to use pickup machines. However, I actually prefer using flex machines because they're a bit more flexible, and also because pickup machines can have problems tracking the tempo. I want to set the tempo and just have it stick at that. What I'm going to do is to go through the setup one at a time and build it up, showing each of the various tricks that I'm using. And then I'll come back and I'll build another track really quickly so I can show how easy it is. Okay, so let's get started. So I've loaded up a project. It's a very simple project. It's basically just got these flex machines on each track allocated to the same recorder as the track number. What I want to do is to be able to hear the modular or the Octatrack at certain points in time. So the way I've done that is very simply, I've allocated scenes such that on scene A, I've got X steer on the mixer to minimum, and on scene B, I've got the maximum. So here, I will hear just the Octatrack, and on this side, I will hear the direct input from the modular as well. Okay, so let's get started. I've got a, a kick drum playing just to give us a little bit of context. We're going to record actually something onto track two initially. I'm gonna put a play trigger here. And then I'm going to use a record trigger. Now I like to use one shot records, but this all works with continuous recording as well. The way I do that is I press function no to disarm the track and the function so I've got a one-shot trigger here, but it's not actually recorded at the moment. Then I can come out of this. We can then just put down some... So this is what I'm going to record. We can hear it's not there at the moment. It's coming directly from the modular. If I now do track two, we can hear it's recorded. That's the basics of recording with a flex machine. Very simple. Now, the issue with that is that this is, a, when I'm hearing this, it's a dry signal. So if I add an effect here, now change the sound. Now you may be able to hear Now the important point here is that you can hear that my direct input is not being affected by the delay. But this is. The way we can get around that is to do what's called real-time monitoring. And what we, we, the way we can do that is we take the playback trigger here, and we simply use micro chiming to nudge it forwards one part. Now when we record, what will happen is we will actually hear the effect immediately from the direct input as well.
Now what's nice about this also is at this point it's, it's important to note that the underlying audio doesn't have the effects on it. Okay, so now let's think about overdubbing. How do I overdub this track? Conventionally, the way to do it, I'll stop this moment, is to set source three down here to track two, so that we record on itself. The problem is if you do that, you will get feedback. So I use a different technique. Let's clear the recording trigger for the moment. What I do is I tell it that I'm going to record from track one. Come out of here, and what I do with track one is I set that to playback from recorder two. So I put a playback trick here. You'll notice with no nudge or anything. I then mute this track. So track one is being used purely to play back the recording two buffer so that the recorder on track two can actually overdub it. So let's try that. Put a new sound. So this is from the modular. And now we just have to do our same trick with putting a one shot trig on here. And then at any point we can now just arm it. Now remember we will also get the real-time monitoring on this as well. So that's the essence of what I do. So that's how the looping and layering works. We have real-time monitoring and we have an ability to overdub. So that was doing it on one track and you could keep on overdubbing and layering on that one track. But what I want to do is I want to actually record another track in the same process. So we're gonna do that and I'm gonna show you in one way how we set up the track very quickly. So we simply come to track three, we put a playback trigger, which we nudge so that we have our real time monitoring. We go to track one and we tell it to use recording three and we then come to recording three and set it to use track one as an overdub source and then we create a one shot trigger to record that's it now, I should note, we could do all of that with the transport running, uh, but it was quieter to do it without it. So let's introduce another element. Let's listen to it first. And again, all we now need to do is we can record it. And we can switch it up again. So again, prepare something new. And again, just simply T3, yes. And that's it, we've done it. Now, some important points to note here. We've got real-time monitoring, as I say, if we've got the effects going on, we can hear those from the OctaTrack. And we can see that we can actually switch this between multiple tracks. So that the recording buffers contain just the audio that's coming from the modular, and it's been overdubbed 
It's not got any effects baked into it at all. And we've got those in recording two and recording three. The other thing is that track one is actually free for use at any other time. And then the other thing is I can go back to, to recording back on to track two by simply going and reversing the process and switching this to recording two and then set up. I'm ready to go again on this. Just put a recording trigger and off I go again. Some important points to note on this technique. When you change the buffer of track one, so the playback track, you must make sure that you clear and reapply the triggers on the recording tracks. Otherwise, you'll find it'll actually start overdubbing using the incorrect track. Finally, I just want to show the variable length side of it. So this assumes that we're going to have scale per track. We're going to actually use this at quarter speed and therefore set the master longer so that it has time to run. That's okay. The important point here is that you must also, when we set this up for track four, you need to do the same thing here. You need to set it up to the same speed. And remember here, we were going to here, set this to T1, and off we go. Simple. If you were doing this in a live setup, you might actually use another track as a playback track so that you wouldn't have to go through changing the lengths. Uh, but in the studio, it's easy enough to change the lengths on the fly, I find, because it's simply come into here and then just switch this back to one. So I find it easy enough. Okay, I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions, please leave them below.